Zechariah chapter number 7. It came to pass in the fourth year of King Dyer's, recorded, dated, that the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah in the fourth day of the ninth month, even in Chislu. That's a month. Name of a month. So it's dated. When they had sent unto the house of God, Caesar and Rangelech and their men to pray before the Lord. They called men out to pray to God. It amazes me why they don't pray themselves. People are always calling on people to pray, but you know, they never pray themselves. I mean, it's okay to pray and get others to pray with you. But don't ask other people to pray for you and you're not going to pray. And to speak unto the priests. So here are priests set up. Which were in the house of the Lord of hosts. The house is set up. And the prophets. And to the prophets. Saying, should I weep in the fifth month? Separating myself as I have done these so many years. Should I, should I weep? Should I cry? I've been doing it for a long time. Then came the word of the Lord, the host, unto me, saying, These people say, You know, shall we just do it? I want to do it another year? We've been doing it. We've been saying the Lord's coming. He hasn't come. Can we give it up? Shall we bring in the ping pong balls and a rock? The gospel's not working. Shall we bring in other things? Getting a little tired. We're getting a little heavy. And God answers. Speak unto all the people of the land. Uh oh. This goes to everyone. And to the priest saying. When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month. Even those 70 years while in Babylon, did he at all fast unto me, even to me? Uh oh. You mean you can do something and it's not for God? what he said I know churches and all that they'll fast and they'll pray and God ain't listening they're not doing it to God we're going to fast Friday for such and such thing and Friday afternoon we're gonna all meet at the restaurant uh, that's not fasting We're going to do something for the Lord. And the Lord said, did you do it to me? Did you do it for me? The most dangerous thing is I can see so far. And my eyes are so young in the Lord. I'm seeing new things every day. That it's just. There are people out there who think they're saved. They said a prayer. Someone has converts them to thinking they're saved and they're not. And they'll stand before God. Did you really get saved by what I told you? There are churches right now. They, they think they're doing God's service. And God's going to look at them and say, did you do it for me? Really? You mean you defied my word for me? When ye did eat, when ye did drink. Did not ye eat for yourselves and drink for yourselves? They were to bring offerings. They were to celebrate in Jerusalem. But they couldn't. I mean, they weren't in Jerusalem. We're going to have a fellowship dinner in the name of God. You know what I noticed in all those fellowship dinners? All the lost people get out and get their bellies filled. And go home just as lost and plump for hell. Did you have that fellowship for God? Or to bring numbers in the church? It 
That's what the Bible says. I'm not, I'm not saying nothing. I'm just reading to you. Should ye not hear the words which the Lord hath cried by the former prophets? Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah. Shouldn't you listen to them? When Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity before the Babylon came and destroyed. God's saying you should listen to Jeremiah. And the cities there of round about her when men inhabited the south and the plain. The city was filled. The region was, had a population. They, they were doing good. But you didn't listen to the prophets. You didn't listen to the word of God. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment. Uh oh, somebody must have been doing false judgment. And show mercy and compassion to every man to his brother. Walk up to the people in the land and say, Listen, you know what? You've been judging wrong. I'm getting sick and tired of being in a country that I have freedom to do everything I want. But when you try to get a job, it's passed on to others. Equal rights uh, hiring. Really? Then why you got to ask some of the stupid questions you ask? A person will go before a judge and because he's famous and fame and has got money, he'll get off. Or slap on a wrist. A man who, who DUIs can get out in 24, 36, maybe 72 hours later and go do it again. My, my wife and I watched one of those, those court TV things. And it was a, no, it wasn't. It was actually live. It was in the court room. The guy was arrested for DUI. And man, listening to the two, you know exactly what he was going to do when he got out of jail that day. He was going to go back down to the bar with his girlfriend and drink. That was live court. Something wrong with the judgment. Something wrong with the judges. There's no mercy. There's no compassion. And oppress not the widow. What's she going to do? What can she do? Her husband's dead. She's out of luck. So you take advantage of her. Nor the fatherless. What's the children going to do? They ain't got the father. Can't rely on the mother. Take advantage of them. The stranger. The Gentiles. Nor the poor. Those who have no money. And let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. Well, you don't have to do nothing to do it in your heart. You can just think it. God will judge you a sinner just by thinking. You better confess your thoughts and put them under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know when I ever heard that message out of the pulpit. Ever. And I've been saved since 1987. There's one man I can think, can't mention his name, going on to Gloria. And he's, in his Bible studies, he'll say about your thoughts. But when does it preach out of pulpit, your thoughts are sin. Just as strong as doing it. We read one prophet say, Well, then they devise mischief upon their bed, and in the morning they practice it because they can do it. Listen, because the guy can't do it in the morning when he gets up, he can't do it because he doesn't have the ability to. Listen, the thoughts itself are a sin. Don't tell me you're not a sinner if you can't control your thoughts. 
but they refused to hearken. They would not listen to the prophets. They pulled away their shoulder. You know, ever see, you know, just try to grab a hold of a kid and he just pulls the shoulder away. I ain't listening to you. Complete rebellion. And stop their ears. What did Jesus say? He that has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he spoke those parables, you know the only ones that came up to Jesus after was uh, Jesus? That parable you spake, what did you mean? No one else ever recorded that walk up to Jesus and he explained that to me. They don't want to hear it. That they should not hear. You're not going to do anything to anybody who doesn't want to hear it. You just do what God told you to do. Jeremiah was faithful. He preached what God told him to preach. Ezekiel preached what God told him to preach. Isaiah preached what God... These people that were not here are in hell today still. Yea, they made their hearts... Deliberately, solemnly on their own. They made their hearts. As an adamant stone. Hard. Unturning. Unyielding. Unrepentant. Uncaring. Unloving. Those are all the signs of Satan. John 8, 44. At least they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets, those who have died. Jeremiah, Isaiah. God just told you. Men wrote the Bible. Yeah, God just told you. But my spirit was with them. Man is the pen. The Holy Spirit is the ink. Men wrote the, the classics that are on the Harvard shelves. So? Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. The Quran was written by many different people. You don't have to say, oh, you know, it was written by men. The reason why Jerusalem was sacked. Now he's preaching to the people 70 years after the captivity. They're in the land. The temple's built. They've they're got homes. The temple's there. They're saying, you know why you guys were brought to Babylon? Because you didn't listen to the prophets. This is a prophet speaking to the people. Therefore it came to pass that as he cried, they would not hear. So they cried, and I would not hear them say, God gives a point, I'm not listening. At the great white throne judgment, God's not going to hear you plead. God ain't going to hear your tears. But I scatter them with a whirlwind among all the nations whom they knew not. Scatter them. Like when a tornado comes through. And this, you know sometimes when a tornado comes, you don't ever see anything. It's gone. You're like, where did that go? Never to be found. Thus the land was desolate after them. That no man passed through nor returned. For they laid the present, the, the pleasant land desolate. Why is there destruction? Because you won't adhere to God. It's not El Nemo. It's not global warming. It's sins. Plain and simple. When you refuse to deal with the sin issue, you're only going to get God angrier and angrier, and you're just going to go closer and closer to hell. Uh, 